sleek greyhounds of the sky line up at Newark, New Jersey for one of the world's most thrilling adventures, the daily dash from coast to coast across the continent of America. Gleaming like burnished silver in the early morning sunshine, these planes will soon be racing the wind over 3,000 miles of mountain and prairie, thrusting their noses into the blue in one long, glorious escapade. Another spot of oil and last-minute fussing and time's up. The chalk timetable shows that intending passengers should now be getting aboard. And we're all set for the first stage of our three mile a minute thrust through the clouds. And the plane makes a perfect takeoff. As the ground sinks below, the passengers get a grand view of New York's harbor and the man-made mountains and concrete canyons of Manhattan. If window peeping doesn't claim your attention, there are cars but the stakes needn't be as high as the plane. As the giant ship breasts the clouds of spun silver over the farmlands of Ohio, the clock moves round to lunchtime, and there's more on the menu than air pie. Another long hop and evening falls as the plane approaches Chicago, the metropolis of mid-America. Revolving beacons sprinkle the darkness with pinpoints of light to guide the machine to a perfect landing. Flying by night has become a habit in these transcontinental tours, and it's safe too, because of the reliability of modern scientific instruments and two-way radio communication. For the traveler on his or her first flight, an experience worth writing home about is going to bed in a plane. A feather bed may be a luxury, but a kip in the clouds is a positive joy. Not even the gentle scraping of a skyscraper can disturb the soothing lullaby of the plane's engine. Nighty night. Comes our old friend the dawn, with the plane flying three miles up to conform with safety regulations. But we descend a little to get a better view of Pike's Peak and the Will Rogers Memorial perched among its crags. We're circling the great salt lake of Utah. Salt Lake City is the historic mecca of the Mormons, and their influence can be seen in the imposing tabernacle that dominates the city. The plane roars over the terraced canyon that marks some of the largest copper mines in the world at Bingham, Utah. It reminds one of a fantastic Babylonian garden. And we're over that nightmare come true, the mighty Grand Canyon, where centuries of erosion have seared the rock face into one of the grimmest caricatures on Earth. Winging over the wastelands of the vast American desert, the droning silver bird skirts the mountain ranges of Sierra Nevada and on to Boulder Dam, where 90,000 acres of water are harnessed by steel and concrete, the eighth wonder of the world. And so we roll down the western rim of the world to San Francisco, chief seaport of California and gateway to the Pacific. And now come the spidery cables and tall pylons of the Golden Gate Bridge, the largest suspension bridge in the world. All sense of speed is lost. We seem to be floating lazily above the placid bay. We have spanned America, thanks to the wings of the West. <laughs> 